working on uh, Django, or working with Django rather, on uh, the game Grotto. So today I wanted to implement a character test um, that will happen prior to character generation and I want to implement um, a way that uh, character visiting a room is tracked. So let's start by looking at the excellent wireframe that Wiley put together for what he wants Grotto to look like. And this get, tells the story of, of what all features need to exist. So last time we did a little bit with the guild getting, you know, getting uh, a place where everybody can land. Um, and this time we're going to implement this feature here. So whenever you click on create character, it's going to take you through to um, and the question is going to have a multiple choice answer and based on the answers to that question the character may or may not be generated in a certain way. Uh, it's mainly just a fun thing and the idea is that um, if you want to go through and take all the character tests you can uh, and if you want to create your own you can as well. So we're going to be working on this page and the um, sort of infrastructure around that so that we can see um, so we can so we can do these character tests and then the other thing that I noticed as I was looking through here uh, here's after you've answered the question it'll decide you know if, if you want to ask another question or if it's figured out um, figured out anything about you and then it'll take you to the character screen where you can see uh, what your character looks like uh, rather what your character's characteristics are and um, if you want to get rid of your character, you can. No big deal there. Or you can return to the guild hall. So I'm guessing what that's supposed to say. Um, and then um, this is already implemented. The map of the grotto roughly is implemented this way. Um, if we look into a room, and again, this is just the wireframe. So this is the, the aspiration to what it should look like it's going to be able to, the room should be able to tell you who's in it presently. That doesn't exist in, in the uh, implementation yet. And then it, it ought to tell you something about um, uh, something about past visitors to the room and perhaps things that are found in the room. In this case, some files. Uh, we're going to save files for a later date. Um, and if the Wumpus has visited or is nearby. No, no Wumpus has been implemented yet, but that's uh, another aspirational thing. So we're going to work today on this visits uh, so that we can track who has visited the room recently and leave a little breadcrumb about them, or at least move toward that. So those are the two things we're looking at today to implement. So let's go ahead and do our um, repository work here. I'm going to pull didn't mean to push, meant to pull. There we go. I'm all pulled up. I'm going to make a branch here and call this um, character test. Character test. And that should give us a new branch that we are working in. If I pop over here, yeah, we see it down at the bottom. Okay. So character let's look at what we have so far I have a lot of tabs so far that I do not need here mo uh, models character builder that's the one I want to look at so we have um, a user model which is the human and we have the character uh, the user can have many characters and the is going to have some sort of a visit to a room uh, this is just commented out for now, but eventually we're going to get that. Hopefully today we'll get that going. So um, Wiley also talked about having skills that could be mapped to a character, so we might lay some groundwork for that as well. Um, but primarily uh, what I want to do is class character test. And the notion is that you know we can 
auto generate some of these character tests um, and we can um, we can let the user create them as well so it's going to be kind of a multiple choice question so what we might say is question as a field char field and we want to keep it somewhat limited here so and it's actually required that we have a max length so I'll just go with 200 that seems to be what he's using for other fields so I give it a little bit more 240 um, and then I at this point I don't actually think that the answer to the question is going to contribute to the character seed or anything like that I think it's still just gonna be randomly generated character um, but we ought to track also the answers um, that is non-trivial if we're thinking about storing several multiple choice answers right we don't it's a bad it would be bad for us to do like answer one have that be some thing um, mod models uh, modles there we go um, it'd be bad to do like another char field here Damn it. okay my autocomplete is being but so it'd be bad to do something like this uh, because that would imply that we would have however many answers and then to support another answer choice is like a pain in the ass so instead what we will do is make a new model class character test choices And then here we would want to say which which character test does this go to, and we can foreign key this model stuff foreign key to character test on delete. We want to cascade this. And then here in this choice, we might actually have the sort of ch choice text. And this should not be plural. It's better for those to be singular. So here our choice we can take as a char field. Okay. Um, so this sort of simple implementation will allow us to put as many choices as we want onto any given question and then if we uh, if we um, uh, uh, call up a question we can use the reverse related accessor uh, and let's give it a related name so that it's easy to do that using single quotes in this module looks like um, eventually I want to put I want to make this repo use uh, some code automatic code formatting like black so that uh, so that there's not mixed single and double quotes in places um, just just for the sake of my OCD and you know, minimizing the uh, size of a um, of a commit Okay, so the related name here that we should have is choices. Okay. <clears throat> um, and I, I really think that'll be all. Like, all. Um, I don't see why we need much more than that, at least, at least at the onset. So then um, let's make a, at least in, from the model perspective, I don't think we need much more than that. But let's go ahead and, and try to implement the rest of this. We're going to need a view to bring up the character test and to um, sort of go through the, 
um, the machinery of it, right? To like decide if another question needs to be asked and those kind of things. We could make that a service, but uh, that's a, a it's pretty simple right now. So let's keep it in views until it's complicated. So character detail view. I'm gonna make a class character test view, and as all the other ones have, we're gonna do the login required mix in just so that everybody is has a user to associate this character to. And I really just want this to be a uh, template view, I think. Uh, it could be a detail view, but I mean, we don't really want it to bring up a specific question. We want it to bring up a random question, a single random question, but that's no problem. So let's find CCBV. Let's find out where our template view lives. Um, it lives right there with redirect view, which is not being imported. So let's get that more specifically. Uh, views generic. Template view. Again, I'm going to consult CCBV so that I know what else I need to give it. So template name, give that character, character test HTML. And there might need to be some other sort of glue that, that's put in place. Um, notice in the character test section I'm gonna zoom this out a little bit so we can get more than one thing per page there we go um, on the character test there is the sort of um, the, the test proper when the crone penetrates you with her all-seeing eyes or all-seeing eye rather Ooh, only one and then uh, the sort of you've given your answer to this let's see if it's good enough so what I'm thinking is that this will be what you get whenever you run a get and then this is what you'll see whenever you post your answer to the form there um, and I think what I would like for this to do is to sort of auto submit whenever you select something um, uh, I'll put a submit button for now if, if Wiley wants to see that he can he can do that um, okay, so we got our template name. It's not any given model that we're looking at here. We know that we're going to want some special sauce as we um, as we get into the different method that we might run. But for now, let's just leave this here. Um, and let's make a URL for this as well. Character builder URLs. dot character test view as view name character uh, single quotes jeez okay I'm just gonna satisfy my own obsessive compulsive tendencies there and fix that up um, Okay, so we've got a URL, it's wired up. If we go to that URL, it should look for this template, which does not exist, so that's gonna be uh, problematic. So let's go to Grotto template. No, I wanna go to character builder templates. Uh, I don't know if that even exists yet. It doesn't. Um, Static page. So guild is there. Guild maybe ought to be in a different place now. Uh, whenever I originally, and let's clean up that mess real quick. Whenever I originally made this guild, 
8.html. I made it here because I made the view here. But now the view, I made it in the, the project app. Now the view is here in Character Builder that brings up that template. So, um, yeah, it does not need to exist here. Um, let's let's make sure that nothing will be lost. Let's put these side by side so it's easier to see them. Um, so in the get context data, hmm. Oh, I see. It's listing all the characters that it can find. So we should s limit that at some point. Either way, this can go. Oh. So that's gone. And the URL, I think I already got rid of the URL. Yeah, because I was helping Wiley troubleshoot this earlier in the week. So the URL is already gone. The view can go because it's not doing nothing. And then the template uh, here, guild. I'm going to move it up to the character builder app. So let's make a new folder templates and let's move you. I'm just going to save it in a new spot here. Um, Roboto character builder templates and saving it as guild. And then just to see, um, I'm going to delete it from here. So that's from Grotto Templates, delete. Now let's go through the motions of starting the app. We might get a complaint from this thing. Uh, CD. All right, I should just be able to do Docker. got this thing up it's not what's this why is this saying that oh that's from long that's that's an old log okay um, why what I might have had that running for a while. Hmm. Okay, that looks cleaner. Um, <laughs> so I deleted you. I'm going to go ahead and close that file without saving. So this exists. Let's see if everything still works right by going to localhost 8000. Of course. Why can't you? Um, hmm. that So what I would like to see it do is this performing system checks and then no issue. And then this starting development server. But it's not doing that. So something has gone awry 
in our DevOps setup or in our, our local dev setup. Uh, that's cool. Hmm. Let's check out the commit log. So I think. There's some chaff coming along for the ride. Let's let's clear that up with our git ignore file here. So that looks to me like it should catch PyC files. Maybe those are just residual. How did those get in there at all? Um, anyway, I don't think that's the real thing that's causing the problem here. That seems fine. This is my change. Where I was fixing up some stuff, got rid of that old include, and I created, or uh, uh, got rid of the guild view. up the URL okay nothing there I mean this is all CSS stuff that's not gonna mess with anything that shouldn't affect anything this is all CSS as well so okay there's no structural changes that should be causing this thing to not run so why why you know run uh, well, let's investigate docker compose uh, oh maybe let's build uh, docker Compose build. Oh man. This is going to take a while. Why did the requirements change? Why is this building again? Why is this not using a cache? time I worked on it. it was here or so no requirements.py didn't change why why are you tweaking is there stuff that's not pinned nah why Well, we'll let this build. It takes for damn ever, but no problem. Um, we'll see if that fixes the issue that we ran into. Um, and then I noticed something as I was going back through uh, the URLs, or rather the uh, auto views. Yeah, I deleted something out of here, and then I checked on the URLs, and yeah, it would have caused problems because I need to get rid of that as well. Okay. Mm. Okay. So let's just continue on as though we can check that this thing is working right. Um, so anyway, I moved guild.html to a new place that should work fine. Um, and I want to create character test as well. So guild, I'll just copy this, duplicate it here in place, and we'll call this new thing character test. And the content will be all different. It's, it still will extend the base at HTML. Um, and that is
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hang on, I got some extra loud noise coming through my headphones here. True, okay. Everybody calm everybody calm it down. Okay. Um where were we? Yeah, we were gonna implement this character test. So I've got the I've got the rough space here for that. Um, what we don't have is any context. So <clears throat> excuse me. So let's let's uh, let's think about what we want this thing to say. So back to the wireframe. A crone penetrates you with her all-seeing eye and asks. So let's just use that directly. Here we'll put it in a P. And you know I'm I'm. I'm not focusing too hard on the template here because I'm expecting that Wiley is going to come back through and make it uh, a lot prettier, like make it look a lot better. So, um, so no, I'm not. I'm not super worried about that. Um, I kind of wish that I hadn't gotten rid of all of that guild stuff because some of it will be useful to us here. We're going to need a form. And take that as a given, um, and we're going to need. Um, you know, I'll leave the submit button to Wiley as well. He can change the verbiage there as he likes. Um, what we're going to have is the the query. So this should be the uh, what's it called in the model. Problem question, and then we're gonna borrow some other stuff back here from guild.html. I'm gonna have a for loop, and just so I don't have to type it all out, got it here. Um, for choice in answer choices going to have a and here we need to actually do this as a as like a select element um, and I do not remember how to do those so it's like a um, it's like radio buttons yeah, yeah yeah so HTML5 and we'll find all these websites that we hate radio buttons Sure, whose ads do I see today? Which one? Which one? Hey, I guess it's you, HTML5 tutorial. Input radio. I need to group them though. Take me down to here. Field set, legend, bingo. Uh, right, they all have the same name. And that's what distinguishes them. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, input type radio here with a common name, and each value gets its own thing. So you, I hate you ads, um, but thank you for giving me the information I wanted. So I guess take take that. Um, so I want to do an input here. I'm just going to call this choice. Let's type radio, and then the value is going to be. Um, let's just use the PK of that. So choice PK, and then this will be choice choice. Yo dog, I heard you like choices. So that's what we need there. And we could get fancier and do uh, label four and all that. Actually, you know what? Label, let's see what autocomplete does for label. Oh, nothing special, awesome. Except put the crap that I don't want. Okay, so then four, and then I think I have to do an ID on here to make this worthwhile. So ID equals, I'm gonna use P, 
pk again, choice.pk. So hopefully that does the thing we want it to do, and there shouldn't be a case where this is empty. Um, that gets us pretty close. We need to fill in the context though. So for our context, let's uh, implement a get context data. Oh, Mr. B, we got a little boy poking in the room. Hi, little boy. What you doing? <clears throat> okay, so I've put the sort of boilerplate in place for get context data. And what we want to do here is essentially randomly choose a, um, a question. And then um, pull up all of its answer choices. So I don't think there's a maybe there's a query set to randomly choose. Let's check it out. Let's pull up zeal here. Actually, I already have zeal open on another window. I'm just going to grab it and bring it over. So Django query set API. We could go through a lot. So filter exclude annotate. Goodbye. I don't I want to say that there's not a way to get a random field, a random row rather, from a query set. That's an interesting thing that I've never actually thought about. None all different select related. My guess is that what you'll want to do is um, to get your query set and then just use a, another method to choose a random thing from it. Um, let's go Django random model instance. Django rest framework. Huh. Interesting. So this uh, this guy was doing. Is this it? Oh, this is the question. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they're picking a random number, and then using that to get the ID. Interesting. Um, yeah, so that was just a tactical error there. Uh, wait, is it? Um, oh, right, this needs to be a get query set. Uh, Yeah, this guy is doing a little bit better getting the values list. Just the, the the PKs choosing one of those, getting the thing. Yeah, that seems like a totally um, totally reasonable way of doing this. So I'm going to import random choice. I'm going to find the list of things and then and I'm just gonna shamelessly copy this thing because why not why not somebody tell me why not in the chat right now tell me why I shouldn't character test flat true PK order by ID done it's weird that they're using PK and ID 
in the same thing. Um, it's probably because PK is uh, uh, field. So I'm just going to make that ID as well. And then we'll make this one ID as well. Boop, boop, boop. And then that is not what we want to return. That's our character. And that's our test here. And so our context can be updated. Whoa, I hate that. Context update. Uh, I called it the question. And that's going to be the in quotes question. That's going to be a character, whoa, character test dot question. And then we also want to have the answer choices. Answer choices. And from there, we'll be taking character test dot choices dot all. And I think that would do it for us. Spacey. If I'm going to, I'm, you know what, I'm sick of spacey. Here, I'm just going to spacey. He's importing it in room generator. Damn it. Hmm. Oh well. So we need it. No problem. I'll live with it. So huge. Okay. Let's continue on then. Um you know what I would if I was if we if, if we were if we're doing this thing up right someday, like if it if it takes off or whatever and, and needs to be done, then I would say that all this generation ought to be done in a worker and can be done in a slower moving image that doesn't actually impact dev proper so that uh, you know so that building a, an image for sitting on your, your dev server doesn't, or for sitting on your, your dev environment doesn't take all freaking day. Um, but that's just my opinion on the matter. And we're not quite to the point of needing a worker yet, so it, it's fine. What I'm saying is it's fine. Either way, uh, this ought to do what we're hoping it does once our container builds. Someday. Um, so we get our we get our random character test. Uh, if we wanted to get really fancy, we could uh, you know keep track of which character test any given user has done. Um, but that I don't th actually think that's going to matter at all. So that should make Git work fine. Um, let's think about post. For our post, uh, we don't actually have a post implemented here. No problem. Let's look for something that does something like form view. Do do do. Uh, base detail. Form view. Of course, it's under edit. Form view. And this one has a post. And what stuff does it take? It takes request args quargs cool um, so then we're gonna we're gonna uh, I'm thinking here that we randomly decide whether or not the user has answered enough questions and if they have then we say so to the user otherwise we just present them with another question so um, uh, 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 um, hmm. We need to have a random function that'll let us um, let us check that. So let's Python three random. And this is going to give us some stuff. Um, do, do, do. So what I would like is to have a. 
Um, yeah, here we go. We'll just do rand end. We'll just treat it like an old. And look, we'll just treat it like a like a real RPG, and we will pick a random integer between one and twenty. And if it is above 12 or whatever, then we'll move on. So then roll is going to be randint. Uh, we can go 0 to 19. 0 to. What are we. What's the signature look like here? What are we even doing? Randint A, B. So I'll just do 1 and 20, since we have to give both. And then if roll greater than 12, then um, enough questions answered. And we don't actually even really care at this point what they how they answered the question. It's not going into anything. We could get that if we wanted, um, and we could like validate the form or whatever. Um, but it doesn't actually matter. It's not a real form, so it's not. We're not collecting. We're not keeping that data. So, um, although in the future we may want to keep that data, um, that's something we can decide on later. So if roll is greater than twelve here, we would return. A um, um, we could return a what the hell do we want to even return here? Right, we, if it's if they've answered enough questions, we want to send them to this screen. Um, So that is what we will just have that here in character test. We'll return this. We'll do do do. Uh, what, what the hell are we even doing? Let's let's have a look back over at form view and let's see what post ends up doing. It ends up calling form valid or form invalid, which at the end of the day is going to response redirect. And this was re render to response. What does render to response do? Uses the response class, which should just be template response. Um, that that's kind of annoying. Let's look at just the simple Django stuff. I don't want to do simple Django. So Django. It's going to take us through our polls app. Plate stuff. Models. Let's go to the next one. Writing more views. Beautiful. Okay. That's what I want. Uh, that's a little simple. Let's do it better. that render um, so return what is template in this template is loader dot oh man well let's have a look back over here I don't want to go through all that mess Okay, maybe we will use the form view here. That gives us a little bit of machinery that we don't have in the template view. Um, oh, well, I guess we do have rendered a response. 
Okay, maybe this will be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we render a response with the context, and that should be good for us. So, don't mess with all that. going to pass in for context nothing um, actually I don't love that I'm gonna get context so dot get context data and um, that's what is happening in git so we'll do the equivalent thing here I'm gonna pass in a special quark though in that it says uh, empty So if the post, if we, if everything is good, then we'll return a, um, then we'll return them to a, a page with no context, right? And then for, with that in mind, we can come over here and we can say, um, if question, then do all that. we can get the thing that we want to see here and so that's bang and then clone goes on to say more bang So if a question is forthcoming, then it'll be asked. And if it's not, uh, that takes care of the case where, um, where we roll well and don't have to answer any more questions. Otherwise, return self render to response context and it, oh my goodness. Actually, I'm not even gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna say get. Yeah, because get does the sort of basic thing of getting a, a question and sending it to the template. So I'm not gonna mess with any of that. I'm just gonna send it to get. Okay, so now we can answer a question. We can get the thing that we need when we get the, rather, we, when we answer the question, we either are presented with a new question or not, based on the roll of a die, a d20 type thing. Um, let me comment that a little bit more for Wiley. D20. Ask another question. Um, all right, that ought to just about do what we want it to do. Let's check on our container build. All right, we're done. 
We're done installing the build dependencies for Spacey. Spa I still don't know if it's Spacey or Spacky. Yeah, I, I just don't know. Somebody tell me in the chat if it's Spacky or Spacky. Spacey. Or something else I'm entirely. Could be something else entirely. Spacy. Who knows? Who could even possibly know? I couldn't know. Okay, so this takes care of the... I think, at least, it takes care mostly of our implementation of the character test. Um, oh, no, not quite. Not quite. It doesn't quite. Um, because we ought to permit them to create a test as well, or to take a different... If taking a different test is just going back to this page. Uh, getting another uh, uh, instance of the page. Creating a test, we need to have a separate a separate thing for. So let's make a, a separate page for, rather. Let's make a... Oh, that's not the URL. So whoa. Let's back it up. Okay. Um, we don't need you. Don't need you. Here. Okay. Um, so we'll need a, um, a uh, whatever you call this thing, a template. That's what we call this thing. And we want to have a form. So let's not get rid of everything quite so hastily. We want a form that has. Okay, for this, for this creation of questions, I think we, because we do actually want to save this data, I think that we should create a form uh, class proper. Um, and I think I'm going to save that for after lunch. So um, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, stop for lunch and then come back in probably about 30 minutes and pick up this stream from there so um, yeah I'm just gonna sort of gut this real quick and then we will um, we will pick up where we left off so let me um, create a test Okay, so I'll leave this where this is, and then we'll come back in about 30 minutes and resume. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I should be back soon. Be sure to smash that, uh, that follow button.